explained to EDP 911 this morning, analytical approach to educational planning. planning. That is what we want to look at this morning. And um, we'll quickly look at what we have done on our own before that is uh, EDP 911 analytical approach to educational planning. And I don't know what you have done with this because we are looking into Moodle 1 of it this morning. Yes, I don't know if you have gone through the videos because we had videos on it and uh, reading through the materials. Can I get to know what you have uh, read? Going to module one, if you go through, I'm sure you are with your course material. Are you? Yes. Okay, we'll look at uh, yes, approach, my, my approaches. Material. Sorry? Approaches to model. I'm with my course material. Good. Module one is on approach. Mm. It's on approaches. Yes. Uh, model building approaches in model building so i don't know what you have read you i know you would have listened to the videos and at the same time read the material so what is your view in each of these well, we're talking about model how many models do we have there under the approaches in uh, model building how many approaches did okay. you Mm. Four. Like you four, didn't read through. Four approaches. Did you? You didn't. I did, do, but this I did, but this course I don't know what I brought. My background is a bit abstract, very abstract, and uh, I'll be trying to really make sense out of it. Uh, what is your background? But uh, industrial chemistry, man, came from a science background. So, uh, so that was what I did for my BSc, University of Benin, and. Uh, I'm just missing all this modeling and other all these things for the for the first time, uh, but I'm trying to make sense of it. So what I've been able to gather is that uh, modeling in, uh, is a method of obtaining uh, optimal optimal solutions. And by preparing a model, we can uh, get or predict uh, some variables depending on other other variables. And uh, we have uh, four types of models. We have the iconic, which we also call the physical model. We have the analog model. We have the mathematical model, then the simulation and the heuristic uh, model. The iconic model is a physical uh, model. Physical will physically represent a system in an uh, ideal. Are, are you reading, Mr. Rex? Are you reading? I, 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 I'm reading my. I saw my jotting, my, what I jotted down, uh, so that I can, okay, no, where you have a, and uh, you, and that's, that's where I'm trying to, that's, that's what I do. Okay, but the, for the physical, the, the, the physical or the iconic model is like, uh, probably, how will I put it now, maybe somebody wants to build a house now, they want to build a complex, they do this uh, small miniature something. To see how the thing will look like okay, in, uh, now, let's, in let's the... look at it this way, Mr. Res. Hello, let's look at okay. it. You were you are too okay. far going to the iconic model. Let's concentrate on what okay. you have to do one. Okay. Let's concentrate because everything in the course is all about mm. now. Let me give you a clue, then we'll go into okay. proper discussion. Okay. In man. planning, you have the fresh mm. picture you use. Let me use the home scenario. Yes. I know you are a mom, but sometimes you do enter the kitchen, right? I do, a lot, a lot. <laughs> and you want to cook a goosey soup. Yes. The method you use, somebody asked me, come and say, oh no, I have a different method. There are different methods you can use to prepare your goosey soup, isn't it? Yes. Now, yes. even you can know all the methods. But at a particular time, you will prefer a particular method of cooking it because you prefer to have that taste at that particular time. Now, yes. the method you use in preparing a goosey soup, if you use the same method to prepare 
Ogbono soup, will you achieve the same result? No, it will be a different outcome. It will be a different thing altogether. So that is yes. a model, that is a method that okay. is in place. And okay. it is that method, what you want... Like a blueprint. Like, like, like a blueprint. It's not really a blueprint, because the blueprint will now go uh, stepwise to okay. give you the details of what you want to do. The model will be part of your blueprint. Okay. Okay. The model okay. is part of your blueprint because when you have the model, what you want to do, do not stop there. There are other okay. things that have to build on it. Now, let me use another scenario. At least since you are involved in things that has to do with teaching, you may be able mm -hmm. to carry, get along with this scenario. You want to teach. Yes. If you want to teach, let me use the chemistry that is familiar to you. You want to talk about okay. titration for your yes. students. You want to teach them how to titrate and how to get the end point, which is usually difficult for students. Because sometimes yes. you acquire the chemical and you go beyond mm. end point, yet you end record, point. but the recording will be wrong. Right. And you have to look out for the methods that will suit that teaching. Is it going to be lecture method? Is it going to be okay. demonstration method? Is it going to be participatory method? Are you getting it now? These are different yeah, yeah. teachers you could use. So in this okay. wise, you want to teach and you are looking for the best teaching methods that fit. The same thing when you are planning, there are different models you can use. Okay, in okay. In there are different okay. models. Now, if you go okay. further, and you wouldn't know whether it's this or the other course, you still have the methods of planning apart from the models. Yes. And in that method, yes. you see that the models are equally, equally incorporated. Whereby you talk about the demand and supply model. Then you will talk mm -hmm. about uh, the, uh, the uh, different approach in the uh, model, in uh, planning, like yes. you want to talk about uh, the rate of return. Yes. Method of planning. So these are yes. different methods. And most cases, we, all, we are all involved in these methods. But we may not know that we are doing what we are doing. It's like the law of gravity. That when you mm. throw something up, what happens by the law? It comes down. Even when mm. you don't do it, as you throw it up, leave it, it's coming down. And somebody yes. come up and say, oh, this is the law of gravity. So in mm. planning also, you have models that guide what you need to do. And that okay. is where at the PhD level, you can look through the model and adapt. You can look through the model and come up with a different model. So where this model may not necessarily work very well in our setting. And because it's not working well in our setting, you try to look for another model that could work better in this setting. And in this process, you might come up with a different model. So okay. in this case, if you look at what we have in um, the module one, we have the structural approach, the structuralist approach. Mm. That is the first one we have in that room. So in looking at the structuralist approach, one may want to find out, okay, what is the focus? <coughs> what are we really looking at in the area of structural uh, approach? What are we looking at? What are those things? What are those features that we need to look out for as a planner when you are dealing with structuralist approach? Now, in this case, let us look at uh, what, what I have here. You look at the uh, structuralist, the structural model. And in dealing with the structural model, like if you have listened to the video, what I put in there, I said, structural model specify how well some variables will help to predict other variables. Other variables. You have a variable, and you want yes. to find out how this variable you have can predict mm. for that variables. Can you yes. think of any variable? Have you listened to that video? I have, I have. Okay, now can you just think of any variable? Uh, okay, let's say maybe in the academic setting now, uh, uh, let's say how uh, the cost of fees can predict uh, the number of students that will be enrolled in a, that will be that will enroll in a school in an academic session. That is good. Now we are trying to look at where if you make free education. Yes. You, the free if you have free education. At the primary school level, you will have increase in enrollment. It will influence yes. the increase in enrollment. Yes. Good. That is a good thing. That means 
it is the determinant. The fee paying or not paying, the fee is the determinant then. In that case, yes. it's a non fee paying institution. It means that we have more enrollment. And when you yes. now introduce fee into it, it means you will have less enrollment. Yes. That is what structuralist approach is saying. And okay. again, if you now go further, if you go further, the structuralist approach now says, well, you could equally have a kind of regression because one is predicting the other, so there is a relationship. Yes, it's a relationship. That brings in a relationship, which means yes. the, if you manipulate the fee structure, it will affect enrollment. Yes. Are you getting it? And you can really well. say that the enrollment too could have impact on the social behavior. Because yes. you may believe now that, well, if you have more educated persons in the society, we will have more decent society. Yes, ma'am. Now, you come again, because it's structural, because it's telling you it's structured. Yes. In the area of science, they will say it's scientific. Scientific. Uh, it is structured. You don't just gap, uh, double it to it. You are saying this is, is structured. So in this case, we are looking at it. Yes, you have one variable. You are saying this variable can be used to predict another variable. It's a predictor of another variable. And in yes. this case, we could have what we call path relationship. Okay. We we'll have all, if you go through that video, I don't know if you still have it clearly, when we talk about the path relationship. Now, what yes. are we talking about in this regard? Let me see if I can get it up so that we'll do some ex explanation here. The one we have now, let us do here, mm -hmm. we have this. We need to know the factor. And here, yes. the factor you are saying, we are looking for fee. fee. Let, let's say school fee. Let's be very mm -hmm. sure now. Let's say we yes. say school fee. Mm -hmm. School fees is there. Then yes. we are looking at enrollment. Yes. Isn't it? These are the yes. factors we are looking at. And we are even yes. looking at maybe a uh, socioeconomic status. Yes. Or with this socioeconomic, we should look at now what will enrollment influence if you are educated? What do you think it will influence? Uh, yes. Considering what we have in the country today, uh, can we look at the peaceful aspect of the environment? Okay, yes. let's say socioeconomic status. Let's use mm. status. It's more, it's more encompassing. Now, let us look at this. If you now do this, what are you going to look at? First, when you talk about school fees, what structural model is saying, these school fees, if you leave it at that as a whole, it could be misleading. Yes. First, you have this will have effect on enrollment. Enrollment will have effect on social economic status. But when you go further, it's saying break this into parts. Break this into parts to get the factor. That's why you look at the factor analysis. So if you talk about school fees, we are saying fee paying. Mm -hmm. And we are looking at non-fee paying. paying. Okay. Now you are breaking it down. And this is what normally happens when you are carrying out a plan mm -hmm. or when mm -hmm. you are going into a research. So a person research. Just tell you, oh, I want to look at, yes, I know it's a fee, but have you thought mm -hmm. of the fee you want to look at? Because if you say school fees, it could, somebody could read it as maybe some charges. But yes. now you are saying no fee pay and no fee paying. These are mm -hmm. your focus, what you want to look at. Now you now look at enrollment. Again, under enrollment, you're going to break enrollment now into different factors. What are those things you want to look at in enrollment? Maybe you have to look at increased mm -hmm. enrollment.
and decrease. We are looking at the decrease in enrollment or decrease enrollment. Mm -hmm. This is just an example. Yes, sir. This is what you are looking at. Then if you now yeah. come to socioeconomic status, you are saying in the area of socioeconomic status, what are you now looking at? Employable. Yes. And non-employable. Non non Unemployable. So these are what we are looking at as their focus now. Okay. They are saying yes. Uh, uh, hello, man. Yes. Let me just, uh, uh, Omar is on the line. Let me just know what is wrong with him, man. Okay. Hello. hello. You couldn't connect. Uh, network problem. Okay. I will, I will put that across. Don't keep on trying. Shall class start it? Uh, okay. Hello, Ma. He said he has not been able to connect, but he's still trying to. Okay. I think he has issue with network. I've told him to try and look for the mm -hmm. network that works best in his area. That's right. Mm. Mm, because on networks, they work differently. Mm. So in this case, we have these two. You have Finn. So this is what structuralist model is talking about. That you mm. have to be put whatever you need to do in a structural form. Okay, okay. And you have a particular variable predicting the other variable. This is what we have seen here now. Yes. That says school fees paying will predict the total number of enrollment. Whether you're going to have increased enrollment or a decrease in enrollment. And you are yes. saying too that even the enrollment can have effect on socioeconomic status. Okay. And on the long run, let's assume this is a plan. The person would have been planning well. If you do this, we may have less arm robbers on the road. We may mm -hmm. have less criminal in the society and so mm -hmm. on because they will be employable, they will be engaged, they will be working somewhere. So because of that, they will be able to get along. So this is an example of structuralist model. Now let okay. us look at again the measurement model. Okay. The measurement model examines the latent variable the latent variable are these ones now that we have really worked on. These are the latent variables. Okay, okay. You know, initially, when we started, we were looking at just this. Yes. Isn't it? That yes, school, fees, enrollment, and socioeconomic. If you stop yes. at that, things are embedded. Yes. You measure school fees. There are other things within school fees is embedded. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. at the time you now bring it out, this fee paying, no fee paying, they are hidden. They are the latent variable that were not mm -hmm. mentioned. That is what we have here. Then you have the structural modeling. Structural modeling. The structural modeling, again, equation modeling, this deal with this equation, looking at the exogenous and endogenous variable. In this one, you look at the, you look at the exogenous, Exogenous variables and endogenous, endogenous variables. variables. You know, we work with these from time to time. We use them all the time. Okay. We use them all the time, but we don't know. And when you're looking at exogenous, we can relate exogenous to dependent variable. Yes. Dependent variable, and we can look at exogenous as independent uh, variable. Variable of variables. Now, yes. if you look at these two, I'm sure you are not new when we talk about dependent variable and independent variable. It's not new to you. No, no, it's not new to me. Why? Now, among these two variables, which one influences the other? 
the Why is the difference between dependent variable and independent variable? Okay, the independent variable is the one that if it is changed, we have an effect on the dependent. The dependent is the one that changes when you change the independent variable. So it means the dependent variable is dependent on the independent. Yes, yes. Good. That is a beautiful one. Like if we say now that we're talking about school fees and enrollment now, mm -hmm. school, fees, school fees now will be the independent variable, while the enrollment number will be the dependent variable. Good. Because when you change school fees, it will affect, affect the, other one. Yes. the other one. That is the exogenous variable. Exogenous variable. That is what the exogenous. And in this area, we're looking at exogenous is affected by other variables. They can't stand on their own. Mm -hmm. Enrollment doesn't stand on its own. Yes. Something has to determine enrollment. Mm. If not even school fees, you need to create schools first. Yes. You need to advertise, you need to open before yes. enrollment can come in. Don't Again, come in. it is not sacrosanct that once a variable is dependent, that variable cannot be independent. Mm -hmm. It depends okay. on the circumstance. It the depends contest. on the use at a particular okay. time. Depends yes. on the context in which you are using it. Using it, okay. So, an independent variable that you have now may become independent in another situation or in another yes. location. So, yes. in this area, when you're talking about exogenous variables, now, what easily comes to mind, you are talking about your dependent variables. Yes. And at the same time, when you're talking about the exogenous variable, Remember, what should come to mind is independent variables. And okay. in any planning or study that you're carrying out, you must be able to identify, what are we to identify now? The variable? Yes. And what type of variable now? Now we need to identify, after you identify the main variables, you have to mm -hmm. identify the hidden variable, which are the latent variables. Latent you variables. You have to find yeah. out again, which of them is dependent and which of them is independent? Independent, okay. You see the structure now? Yes. You're get, getting along with the structure. Because yes, I am. first, you need to know the variable. What yes. variables am I dealing with? You want to plan. You have a reason why you want to plan. And there are yes. variables that will be embedded in your planning. Yes. Do you understand? Now you want to plan, okay. Uh, we could see that you have a lot of uh, school dropouts. What do we do? We need to get some children. Okay, the number of enrollment is low. Okay, let's see. Well, let's talk with you. Suppose, how do we increase enrollment now in primary school? Okay, but uh, maybe we should make it free. Would that help to bring people and so on? You know, recently there was something that uh, the president mentioned uh, that was on news. I don't want to start, is it arresting parents? Yes, oh, Minister of Education. And yeah. are out of school. Out and of some, school. Yeah, some people were talking that, oh, is that the first thing to be done? You need? Well, mm -hmm. if, for example, if all the schools already are free at the primary level, and they feel, well, we have done what we need to do to bring in the pupils into the school, and they are not coming, that would be another alternative. So, like in debt, like in debt, and they have this uh, Edu Masha. Okay. Any, any, any child caught wandering during school hours is arrested, mm -hmm. and the parents come and they are prosecuted. And it has really helped the, the state. You won't see children from morning to 12. You won't see any child on the road. Good. No hawking. Good. Because you see that, like in that Asaba, mm. they were being influenced by the activities in Onicha. Yes, yes. Business money, money, environment. Money, money. And business you see young ones, they are interested yes. in going into business. They want to make they, money. They all can sell items on the road. Because if the society encourages it in a way, because in society way. applauds money. Money, yes. Not knowing how old you are and how you get yes. in the money. Mm -hmm. But you see that the measure that the state has taken now has helped to curb it. Yes. So that measure... If you classify it as a planner, it falls into a place. The person that was planning it had a motive. And the motive is being achieved. That come, if we do this, it's a variable. 
let's set up a control measure that will set up this uh, edu, is it edu sas you call them edu masha edu masha and yes. uh, they will be helping their work is not to stop vehicles or whatever no, 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 just children. To arrest the children that are wandering in the streets oh, doing us. Yes. And because the parents now know they're going to pay for it, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they will encourage their children and monitor their children to ensure they go to school. Yes, ma'am. Not hiding out somewhere. And if there is a joint where they normally go to to hide or do things that are not, even the joint will not be comfortable housing such children yes so you see that that is a process of planning planning it's a method you use in planning it's a method you can use in deriving what you need to do so in this case you discover that first you have the main variables that is serving as a guide and from there you now have the you are able to bring out the hidden variables within it and you are able to bring out which one you need to control to have effect on the other. Okay. So do you have question or clarification on this? It's clear now, ma'am, because the course material we have here, when I went through it, it's quite different from what you are explaining now. But I think it's clear now. It's clear. But I did some video. You didn't watch the video. I watched, but the, you know, the, it was the concept, like I said, I'm just coming across modeling for the, for the very first time. Uh, so my mind was going to probably mathematical, something mathematical, my idea of what we see. Uh, maybe like no, we have some models. There are some things that, that are mathematical. Uh -huh. uh, so that was where my mind was really going to. Mathematical no, models. Uh, okay. It's not okay. mathematical. Uh -huh. I think what that we are explaining a... now, because uh -huh. this is that we build on. Now, when yes. we go to the simplest model, uh -huh. tableau, okay. the tableau uh -huh. model. Okay. All these are models. Mm. Even when we talk about the demand and supply model. Yes. You know, we use it in planning too. Yes, we do. We the do. demand and supply. You have mm -hmm. a little bit of mathematics. How many people are demanding this? What supply mm -hmm. do you have? You can talk about teacher, teacher demands and supply. You can and talk supply. about student demand and supply. And supply, yes. Yes, because how many children are ready, really capable to go to school? And they are ready, they are ready at that time to go to school. They have many schools available to absorb them. Okay. That is demand and supply is coming in. The, the, the government is the one to bring the supply. Mm -hmm. The students and the and parents are the ones demanding the education. Education. So like what is happening in the university setting now for JAM, you see we have higher demand than the supply. Than the supply, yes. And that is the reason why you are seeing they are raising the cutoff mark anyhow, a lot of anyhow, anyhow. It's, yes, it's uh, very sad. because they are yeah. trying to control because yeah. the capacity we have in the government is cannot. cannot even carry mm. the demand for university education. Yes, yeah. we have the private universities, but is it really solving the problem? No, it's because the cost for that the cost. education. It's higher than the it's driving, that, it, that it's driving demand. Down demand. Yes, yes. So we now have that still on the nation still have that problem. And that is why they actually came up with National Open University of Nigeria. To the rescue. So provide access. Yes. And really it has helped it has a great helped. deal. Yes. Yes. And yes. even right now, you observe that. Some other institutions are going are starting to start learning. Yes, yes, even, going private, to... even, private, even private schools are going to it. Okay, I have not really come across any of the private school. I tell yeah, you, there's one, there's one in Edo State now, uh, there's one university in Edo State. I can't get the name now. They have started, they started even up to master's level. Yes. Oh, is it a government yes. owned university? No, it's a private owned university. Uh, which private university is that? Uh, 
I don't know, it has this Yoruba name, that was that VC something. Uh, yeah. I know when we, when we uh, I'll get the name. Okay. Uh, once in a lab, you see university, but I know it's in Edo State. We saw the sign post and the advertisement. I hope uh, it's not uh, the main campus they are moving, they are putting a lazy because there is a, a lab, you see, on Abba Joy University. No, no, this one is in Edo The university is in Edo State. And uh, what the I know whether they are having a kind of, will I call it outreach now? As a distance uh, it's like, learning. Uh, they are doing just like open universities, not distant learning program for mm -hmm. MBA and MSc. Programs. Uh, maybe it was one of their because there is a lab BC on Amber Joy University. Oh, okay. In the West, we're confirmed. So that is just by the way, that is just an example. So in the modeling, it's just a structure that is in place. And you yes. want to say, this is what I want to follow to achieve mm. what I need to achieve. What I, okay. Now, the, we have looked at the measurement model. Now we yes. have to distinguish between structural model and measurement model. Okay. What is the difference between structural model and measurement model? Measurement measure show casual differences, dependencies between exogenous and endogenous. So the relationship. Yes. We are talking about the measurement model. It shows a kind of relationship, and that is why you come up to say, okay, where well, there is no significant difference. Difference. Or there's okay. no significant relationship between, between A and B. And B. Which means you are saying A is equals to B. There is no mm. relationship. Now, in mm. this case, what do you do for that? You now find out, okay, if there is no relationship, how does this affect this? Does it or it doesn't? That is what the uh, measurement model is doing. Now, when you look at the structural model, it shows relationship between variables and indicators. Okay. Why the measurement showed when you say cause, they cause an effect. Yes. The other one showed just the relationship. Yes, mm -hmm. there is a relationship, there is no relationship. Okay. Whether it is in the cause form or not, it's not a major problem. Now that covers that. Now looking at uh, we have dealt with um, the structuralist approach. Yes. The second approach we have here is the behaviorist approach. Okay. You see, planning be modeled according to behavior. You know, for everyone, we have the way we all behave. We have our peculiarity and how we get along with the behavior we normally exercise. Now, for the strong behaviorists, they look at the stage theories of behavior. There are different stages that one can pass through to enact behavior. And even yeah. the humanistic aspect of it, if, for example, you want to uh, hit your child, something would have led to that hitting. Yes. Something would have led to you picking a cane or something. There would be, before you even take it up, there is something that would have run through your mind. Mm -hmm. You may have caution, you may have been angry. Mm -hmm. Is that Omage calling you? Yes, yes, let me take his call, man. Hello, Omale, sir. Uh, it's okay, no problem. Uh, I'll show that. She said, he said that he, he couldn't connect. Uh, so I've told you. You should look for a good. Um, the internet okay. that works there. I think he's mm. using MTN. MTN may be working best in another place. Mm. We have to look for an internet that is working in its own area. Okay. Mm. Mm. I discuss with him at the end of the class. So that is this. Then we have the personality theory. Behavior according to your personality traits. Okay. If now, now we we'll talk about um, Using the SARS, uh, what do you call it now? Edu, 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 Edu Masha. Masha. You yes. use your Edu Masha. You may want to use Edu Masha in another location and it will not work. Why not? It will not work. But because if you're coming up with that Edu Masha, you may have looked at the personality of the parents involved in this case. Yes. So we abandoned the children. Involved <laughs> in this case. Because some of them, what they will hear is that force. Yes. 
Whereas if you go to more, because even the children that don't really go to school, that roam about, if you find out the category they belong, they belong to the middle, not even middle, below middle, middle. Lower. Like, below. Lower. Whereas Lower. those that are from middle and above, they may not even want insults. So for yes. that, obey the rule and do obey what they say. So you may get to another environment that it won't work. So the personality traits will not come in there. Now, you look at the learning and behavior theory model. Okay. We all have different ways we learn. Learning may not occur the same way to everyone. So when you are planning in education, you have to take this into consideration. Sure. Giving it a thought that there are different ways people learn. And again, each person has his own ability different from the other. Yes. So if we have this, you know that there are those that will be good in the arts. There are those that will be good in science. There are those Tell them to stand and talk, dramatize from now till tomorrow. They are not tired. They can engage you. Even you that is watching, you are not tired. Yes. So if you now know that there are different modes in which you have learning theories, do not undermine the learning theory. You have to bring it into play when you are doing your educational plan. Because depending on what you're planning for at this point in time, like you told me, you are into training for your state. Yes. Training people and entrepreneur in your state. Then why was that up? You have to look at the planning model. You look at the learning model, sorry. And looking through the learning model, you discover that there are some of these people. They can learn crafts. Yes. They can learn a skill. There are some of these people, they even have what it takes. What they are lacking, they just is soft skill. And you want to yes. give them opportunity to have that soft skill. So guide them on what they need to do. There are some of these um, micro business persons. They contribute a lot to the economic uh, growth of the nation. But sometimes yes. they are doing that business, they don't even know how to save the money. Let me use this Okada riders. Do you mm. know that some Okada riders, what they make, it's more than some people that put on time and go to office. Yes, you are very correct, man. But on the long run, they are not able to account for what they make. It's true. So such persons, you may want to say, okay, since I have a high number of these persons in this region, let us give them a, an education. It might not be an informal education. It may not necessarily be formal education. You may put also jiggles that will guide them on what they need to do. What they need to do. Now, we we'll now go to the social learning theories. You cannot remove social impacts when you are planning education. Remember, we all have our social ways and the social things we do. So in the social form, you have to integrate it into the educational system. There are some, like I did mention, even from nursery school, there are some children you will come to come on stage and do presentation. Let it be two million people gathered, they will shake. And that child will just be five years old. That's true. Whereas you have some that would have even been 16, they will have stage flights. Yes. So it means socially, somebody somewhere need to be carried along to always come to the forefront. And when you are not planning, remember also that these children should not be cut off from their social group in pairs form. Because they belong to a group, they relate, they talk. Okay. And that is why when you are planning, all these things have to be put into place. Okay. And it comes into, into educational planning too, when you are planning, even the method, the approach you're going to use, in disseminating education to the masses or to those that need it. Okay. The social method approach comes in. Mm. Comes in. Now, let me use this scenario. Using this class, 
Before now, when the use of e-learning was coming up, what happens? We didn't have this way you could see me, I see you online. Mm -hmm. And some people critique it and said, well, it's not really happy because apart from just getting, it's not only the education, you need to have that social contact. Yes. Again, even for the distance learning, people use that and you have to do the social contact. I need to know you and you need to see me. We need to talk. We need to interact. Yes. It's not yes. just enough testing. It's not just enough doing this. Mm. But with the video conferencing, you see that that is happening. It I'm is. sure when you see me tomorrow, even uh. based on who <laughs> recognize me, you say, yes, yes You've heard yes. my voice. The tomorrow you yes. see me, I will say, yes, this is yes. the one. Yes, ma'am. And hearing me speak, you responded, I'm sure there's already a social, uh, psychologically, the social yes. motive is already getting mm. fulfilled. Already, yes, so yes. when you are planning for education, you don't throw away this. So you must bring in the social approach into your planning. If not, mm. it will not survive. Not that survive. is why in schools, you encourage dramatic society. What mm -hmm. do you do? You are bringing in social connection. Yes. You see, that at that point, the students are able to meet with one another. They are happy and the rest of them. Because the social part has come in. Now, yes. let us uh, talk about the social psychological theory. Okay. Which, in a way, I've already embedded. Social, yes. but the psychological part you have in you. Mm -hmm. Again, let me use a very micro level of planning using the e learning form. Okay. Through the e-learning form, there are some students that socially, they cannot raise up their hand in the face-to-face -face class to attend to a <laughs> question or answer questions. Yes. But yes. because they are not seeing people around them, they feel them. they will just test and send yes. to Because yes. they are having that social impact. Supposing I don't get it, I don't mm -hmm. want to be humiliated. I don't want mm -hmm. my friends or my peers to laugh at me and so on. Then even in this one we are doing, because you are not seeing everybody at once together, somebody may just be there, will not talk much because... So if you are not planning education, remember, psychological part comes in. Now, mm -hmm. let me leave the micro. Let me go a little bit extended. Now, with that Edu Marshall that your state have carried out, do you know you have some sort of social psychological problems among the children? Yes. yes. Because there are some children that we are not happy seeing themselves roaming the streets when others are in the class. Mm -hmm. Some of them, they really wanted to be in the class, mm -hmm. but no opportunity for them to be there. Yes. Some of them, if that action was not taken, some of them would have gone into depression. Some of yes. them would have ended up killing themselves. And some of them yes. would have ended up being hooligans on the streets. Miscrants. Mis so, you see, you can't take it off. That is what the social, psychological theories are bringing to you. That when you are planning, bringing the social and the social psychological parts. That part that we have fed the students. It's not just that, yes, I have a school for you, I have teachers for you, go there. But you must put other mechanism in place okay. that will guide the students. Now, we have yeah. talked about social cognitive theories. And that is why in education, you always emphasize start from simple to complex. Yes. You always have something to build on, not starting from complex to simple. Then we talk about the social marketing. The social marketing is just like he used all the marketing features. Mm -hmm. In education, you cannot roll out social marketing because you need to market the product you have. Mm -hmm. And if you say, well, in the school, if you get to school and you finish your school, it will make you a better person. Okay. You will be employable. What are you doing? You are marketing. Okay. You try to market the demand, the students that are coming to your institution. And it's more, even with the private uh, schools. Universities. 
schools. Uh, they do a lot of marketing and demarketing. Yes. And the market. sometimes they demarket others. Yes, they do that. Now, we talk about the health belief model. And in talking about the health belief model, planning ensure that it will plan in such a way that it will not have a negative effect on the participants, the students. That is why you have breaks. That you don't okay. sit a student down in the school for eight hours without standing up. Mm. Within that eight hours, the even depends on their levels. In some school, they will have lunch break, short break, where they can go and take snacks, long break, okay. where they can mm. take lunch if they have lunch, before mm. the main closing time. Mm -hmm. Because you thinking about their health, sitting there in one place, not exercising, could cause some damage to them. And yeah. sitting there, pouring things into them, thinking of the brain, it could be overburdened. Mm -hmm. Now, you talk about the theory of interpersonal behavior, how you relate with one another. So these are theories that are put into play mm -hmm. when you are planning. Okay. Remember, we have looked at the uh, structuralist approach, and we have yes. looked at the behaviorist approach. Behaviorist approach. The behaviorist approach, be, when you look at behavior, behavior. how the theory that influences behavior. Mm. Structure, theories that guide the structure of what you want. Okay. What to do. Okay. I don't know if there is a, a clarification now. Is it yeah, clear? It's okay. It's, it's clear now. It's, it's clear now. It's clear. So each of the theory is focused. Then we have. Uh, the idea by the third unit, we are looking at planning as a model. Mm. You see it now? We are seeing even planning itself as a model. Because if you now come to the wider society at the global form and you want mm. to do a reform, what do you do? You plan. plan. So the planning there becomes a model. So yeah. planning within planning. I don't know if you are getting that part. You are planning. Yes, I am within Planning. It's a very bigger yes. form. You now need to plan mm -hmm. to achieve yes. what you need to achieve. So in this case, can may I ask what is planning? Because we are seeing planning as a concept. We mm. are seeing uh, planning, looking at planning as a concept, as a method, and so on. So yeah. what is planning? Uh, I would say planning uh, simply implies a series of activities that we do. Uh, to achieve uh, predetermined uh, objectives, we of course with limited resources. Good resources will always come there. We're looking at planning. You are looking mm. at using the limit, lim, uh, limited resources to, to achieve, achieve a specified mm. goal. Objective. Okay. Objective. Now, yeah. in that planning, there are different things you need to bring in. We have the social demand approach. When you're looking at the methods of planning, social demand approach believe everybody go to school. Yeah. Everybody. That was the one we had during the UPA where you have free education. Everybody education. must go to school. Then you yeah. have the other one, incremental labor output restriction. You yeah. plan according to the number of uh, demand that is required in a particular. Then you plan according to the density. That is the density ratio within the mm -hmm. environment and you have mm -hmm. manpower forecasting approach. When you want to use yeah. the manpower forecasting approach, what do you do? You must go link up with the industries to know what yes. is required so that you know yes. what to plan for. If not, so, you may turn down because I normally tell people, today we talk about unemployment, unemployment, or no enough mm -hmm. job. Is it really mm -hmm. we don't have enough job? I don't believe so. It's because... People mm -hmm. are unemployable. Mm -hmm. Good. They're unemployable. Because there is a paper I did recently, and what my argument there is, is that we are saying no employment. Well, mm -hmm. we now find out, is it that we don't have enough employment? Because people are agitating, uh, give us employment, give us more job, give us more job. Now, while we are shouting, give us more job, even within some pri private schools and in the government mm -hmm. sector, we are having expatriates. Yes, community. We bring them in all the time. Mm -hmm. So it means okay. something is wrong somewhere. And some yes. of the expatriates that come here, some of them are not even working for an individual or government. They are establishing and they are yes, that, that, 
my, that is even what uh, because uh, Dr. Fua was asking me, and I was saying that that is even what I was thinking of looking at probably to uh, uh, my research because we. Hello. Close to so what? The other college. Uh, hello. Did, can you, I can hear you, ma? Did you? I, so hear you. I didn't hear you. Uh, okay. I was giving my own observation that has been bothering me. That even where we have buildings in Asaba here, what we normally observe is that uh, you see these builders. They come from Senegal. They come from Kotonou and Benin. Good. But, but yeah, we turn out uh, we turn out people of technical colleges here, yeah? Electric, electricians, uh, plumbers, and they're not to be found. They're all looking for for a small small job of eight thousand, ten thousand. So I was asking her that uh, I, I probably writing a paper on that. Uh, what the the the, 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 level, the quality of uh, people with turn out from technical colleges because it, they're supposed to feed these systems like the plumbers, electricians, but they they don't. Instead, you see them with their certificate from technical colleges. They're looking for messenger work. They're looking for cleaner job. And I ask them, but you have technical college. Why not go into building? Why not go into house wiring? So I think I agree with you, Ma. I think it's really a case of unemployable gra graduates rather than really full unemployment. So that is where we have to look at the competency. Yes, the competency. So what did you put in them? In them, yes. Now, again, we have to look at, um, finally, we look at the importance important element in planning. Yes. Or what are those things you need to consider in planning? First, before you plan, you must look out for the objective, the goal. The goal. Yes. Of what you want to plan for. Whether it's an institution, the government, well, there must be a goal. And yes. it is the goal or the objective that will guide every other thing that you will need. Then you have to look out for the setters that will be involved in the goal that you want to achieve. Because in mm. most cases, only you cannot do the planning alone. Mm. If wherever you want to set up more schools, you must find out the topography of this. You must get somebody that is knowledgeable in that area that you okay. need to work on and the rest of it. So those are the, uh, I will leave that to you to go and read more on it. It's a straightforward okay. thing yes, yes. on that. Mm. Do you have any question? No, it's okay. It's okay, man. Okay, it's okay. so 